Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a nutrition info app, nutrition info app as I'm showing the screenshot here using just a static Excel data in Power Apps. It's a very simple app. You don't need to connect to any backend. If you have your data, static data in Excel, you can create a very fancy and good app and you can see the screenshot here. Let me first show you how will that app look like and then we'll go through the process. So this is the app that is the finished app. Uh, this data is directly coming from static Excel. So you cannot save anything, but at least for showing the data, it's a very good app. And there are very useful scenarios like this where uh, you can just use the static data. So what this app does, it gets data from this Excel that I just downloaded from internet. Uh, it has a lot of fields as you can see for different kinds of food and their nutrition content and as you can see there's so many columns and all my app does is it just shows the list of those food and their calories if I go to the detail I will see more details of the nutrition I've just taken some fields from the spreadsheet to show uh, I'm not the nutrition expert, but I just took some that I know uh, which are uh, interesting nutri uh, nutrition information for a food. So this has a lot of foods, but for me to search, I also have a search functionality. So I can search for cake and to look for all the uh, food items which have cake in it. And uh, you can just filter for that. I can search for pizza uh, and so on. Um, it just takes from the full uh, information I search for pie I can look for pie information and so on so it's a, it's a, a nice simple fun app but there are many real life scenarios also where these concepts will be very helpful so let's get started uh, here's a blank app that I already have nothing is there in this app and this is the app that we this is the blank app that we're going to use to implement these features so let's first examine the data. Here is the Excel data source that I'm talking about. We'll, we'll not be writing anything to that. So it's more like a static data. So let's just first see how do we uh, import the static data into our app. There's one thing that I need to do in this Excel uh, to be able to import, but I'm not doing it purposefully for now, just to show you what error you will see and how to fix that. So let's go to power apps, go to this data sources, go to data. And there are many connectors here. It's a big list. It's going to be hard to find this one. So I'm just going to use the search. So I'll search for import. I see import from Excel here. Click on import from Excel. And I'll go to my download folder where I have the, the spreadsheet. This is the spreadsheet. I just copied. Power Apps will try to import it and it gave me some error. So look at the error message that I got. No tables were found in the Excel file. So this is very important thing to do in Excel file so that you can import the static data. I many times forget and many people who are trying their hands with Power Apps and who are newbies, they sometimes they wonder what's going on. So let me close this error, go back to here. Creating this as table is very simple. All you have to do is select everything in the Excel. There's a shortcut called Control T, uh, but if you don't find the shortcut or on your computer, because if you're not on Windows, if it, that doesn't work, uh, there's one menu option here in Excel, as you can see, it says Format as Table. Just click on that. You can select any UI that you like. It doesn't really matter for Power Apps. Let's say I select this. And my Excel now has a table. You can see table has a table name table one. We can leave it as it is and that should be fine, but I'll just make it slightly more understandable. So I'll say nutrition, um, just to give it some significant name. And I'm just saving the Excel. Now, Power Apps should be able to import it. So I'll click on that button again, import from Excel, select the same spreadsheet, 
and hopefully this time Power Apps will successfully import it dead. You see this table name that I gave here, it shows as a table. I'll select this, connect. You can have multiple tables by the way in your Excel and it will show multiple tables and you're fine with that too. So now in my app, as you can see, I have this nutrition data. So this is imported from Excel as opposed to a data source that also accepts writing like SQL or SharePoint or common data service or Dataverse. But this imported data is just the static data. That means you can read it, you can do all the all the kind of messaging, but you cannot really write anything to, into it. And there are valid scenarios for that. So now we have the data. Let's see how do we show this in a gallery like we saw here. So it's very simple. Uh, just insert a gallery control. I'm assuming you all know what is a control. This is a gallery. Insert a gallery. Uh, and I just choose a template that I thought would be good, but Power Apps will give me flexibility to modify it. So here's the default gallery. It's coming from, from some sample data. As you can see, gallery has this property called items, which is tied to a custom gallery sample. It's a sample we are going to change that to the table that we imported but before i do that i'm going to change the layout of this because i don't need image so let's see which layout is best for me and maybe i like let's say this one so it removes the image these are still from placeholder text so don't worry about them and now I'm going to change the data source of this to this nutrition table that I imported from Excel. So as Power Apps does, it just guessed some fields that might be relevant for this. The guess was not the best, but that's fine. We can easily fix it. There are two ways to fix it. Either I go to this gallery and I see these fields. I can edit the fields from here, or I could have gone here and selected the fields myself. Um, totally up to you. Somehow I uh, like to do it this way because I, it feels more like a formula. Uh, this is the name, so food name. So as you can see, these food names have started to show up. I can show the calorie. And now you can see the calorie also for this food. Uh, in fact, you can get more fancy and you can also say um, calorie and I can make it calories so that it's clear that it's calorie. Um, so as you can see, I can use a simple formula which is concatenating. So this is the calorie information which is coming from the spreadsheet. And I just added a text, concatenated a text space calories so that it shows as calorie now calorie for this is good but maybe i also want to know uh, or maybe let me put the calories here so i'll go back here copy this and do this so it shows calorie uh, so now it shows calorie and calorie i'll tell you why i did that stupid thing uh, what I wanted to show here is this calorie is for what kind of serving because you cannot just say calorie in this button milk for in how much quantity. So I was figuring out which field is the best one seems like the bottom one. So I'm just gonna pick the field that takes, tells me about the serving size. I think there's a field called serving size. Yeah, serving weight, serving description. It doesn't matter which is serving weight. So that means in 34 grams of Pillsbury golden layer buttermilk, we have 307 calories. Again, going back to user experience, it's not very obvious to the user that we're talking about grams. So let's do that with a very simple concatenation. And I'll say this grams. Or maybe I will also say uh, in And I know I'm splitting here. The goal of this 
is not to have the exact word, but at least it looks decent. So 307 calories in 34 grams. So at this point, we have very basic thing done. We can get the data, we can show the name of the food, we can see the calories, and we can also see in how much quantity. Now, next thing for us to do is to show the detail of this. So like in this app, we have the summary, and if the user clicks on uh, the summary, uh, the more details are shown. So let's briefly implement that. So I'll go back to my tree view of the screens. So I can see this screen and I'll just add a new screen now. So new screen and I'll just say blank so that you know how to do things from scratch. And uh, for these kind of applications, you might think that we can use the form, but for static Excel data, somehow that doesn't work very well. So I'm just going to implement it in a very simple and crude way. So what I will do, I will take these um, labels. So I'll just say here, I'm going to show the calories. So I'll say calories and I'm going to put another label that actually shows the calorie information. So uh, and I'll just leave it as text. We'll see how to fix that. Let's just do one more. I need not implement all the fields that I see here, but I'll give you an idea of how to do it. And show fat. And the last thing we can do is put another label at the top. Um, move these at the bottom. That shows the name of the food so that when the user comes to the screen, they can see what is the food we are talking about. And that becomes kind of the title of the screen. So that's very similar to how these uh, uh, this text in the blue background is being shown. All right, and just for minimal formatting, I'm gonna change the uh, background of this to bluish. Okay, so that's great. Now we have some basic formatting, but how do we get the data? Uh, because this is all static text, text, text. How do we fill this with the calorie information? And what we want to do is whatever item is selected in the gallery, we want to show that. So if you have seen my other videos on navigation across screens and also seeing how to show the details of the selected item, we are going to use the same concept. So all we have to do is look at this gallery on this button. We are going to first navigate to the screen. So let's navigate to, so what I'm doing is on, on select of this button, on select event of this button, I'm going to use this function called navigate, which allows me to navigate from one screen to another. What is the target? So target obviously is screen two. Ideally, you should have a better name for these screens, but I'll go with whatever Power Apps gave me. And then I can choose how we want to transition. Uh, honestly, I don't care, but depending on your user experience requirement, you can choose any other option. And there's a third parameter which is optional, but I'm just not using that and just doing this for now. So at this point, what this app is doing, it's going to the second screen, but nothing much is happening after this. So let's fix that. So first thing we can do is as user comes to the second screen, let's figure out what item was selected from which user came to screen two, and let's show the detail of that item. And a very simple way of doing that is look at this control name of gallery. It's called gallery one. Again, you should have renamed and uh, put some more significant name, but I'll go with gallery one. And this screen, I'll just say for this, uh, uh, for this label, there's a property called default or text, text. So for text property, see sometimes I don't remember what is the exact property name. I just look at all the list and guess. It's sometimes default, sometimes text, I still get confused. So for this text, instead of saying text, I will use a formula and formula will be that I have to use gallery name 
and gallery is something that uh, gallery name is something that is accessible across all the screens of power apps so unlike some local variables once you have a name of the gallery on one screen you can use the same name to refer to the same gallery on any of the screen in power apps so it's more like a global construct if you uh, if you will now the, as soon as i say gallery one dot and you see different options i'm going to use the selected because we need to find the selected item dot and we need to show the name so i'll just choose the name so as you can see for the selected item i can see the name of that item and all i have to do is just for simple formatting i will change it to white so that it looks slightly better okay now same thing we can do for uh, text also so i'll go to this and again just to bring your attention to important things label text property i'll say gallery gallery one dot selected dot um, calories and hopefully fat should not be a surprise for you i'll follow the same model i first copied this but i don't need calories i'll say dot i think fat And that's it. So here I'm just showing detail for uh, two, but in this app where I finished, I did more work to find out more nutrition information, but the concept is the same. You can do it as a homework, put more fields there and try to get the values for the selected item from the first screen. But for this video, I'll leave it as two fields. So let's see how this works. So let's preview the app. I selected this, I can get this. Now there's still one problem in the app. I can see the information, but I don't know how to go back to previous screen and we'll fix it. But let's just first see whether it's getting the information for the selected item. We selected the first one, we got that. Let's preview it again. Let's select second item. And you can see that now it's getting the information for the selected item that, uh, the item that we selected this time. Okay, so let's fix the problem that we cannot go back. Uh, it's very simple. All I do is I'll just insert an icon. And where is my icon? Okay, so I see the icon and I need a back kind of icon. Uh, maybe arrow, maybe this. Okay, let's just do this. So I found this. I can do better formatting, but for now, I'll just do very simple like this. You can use the same color. Uh, and then maybe change the color to white. And this looks too big. So I'm going to put some padding here. This is very similar to how if you're coming from CSS and HTML background, how you do some kind of formatting in uh, CSS and HTML. Again, it still looks very ugly. Uh, this one is slightly better, still not the best, but you get the idea on how to do that. I'm not going to spend much time trying to fix these colors, uh, uh, but I'll just implement the functionality. So for this button, all I have to do is, so far I was dealing with the attributes like color, uh, and four color and background but now let me implement some action i still call it event sometimes that's how i think about it so on on select event of this button all i have to do is say back i mean i could have said navigate to screen one but this is very simple all i'm asking it to do is go back to where it came from because that's that will suffice for this uh, scenario in some other scenario you might want to do explicit navigate to the screen that you want to go to now, how do you want to transition? I'll just say none, but you can get more fancy and try other navigation options. Okay, so let's run this again. It's not actually running, it's preview, but okay, let's preview this again. Let's select this item and see, I can see the details for this, go back. I can see details of this, go back. So that navigation and back part is all implemented. Now, 
the last thing to implement in this app is the search part but before I do that let me just put one very simple label at the top so that this first screen doesn't look like it doesn't have any title um, so all I'll do is put a label and I'll put a very static information here nutrition info just to make it look like label I will format this and put some color okay I'm not making very good choices here but uh, you'll get the idea and make it slightly bigger I am doing basic things of this because you get the idea and you can use the same concepts and you will have more time so you can get more fancy there all right so nutrition info app all I have to do is implement the search button like this so for that I will put a control text input this is where user will type the search information the search text and then I'll put a simple button um, I could have used an icon like this uh, or I can be even more simplistic and just say search here the the code and the formula will remain the same if I select the button and call it search I have to write something in the on select event of that but if I don't do this and I use the icon uh, for search where is search um, it's funny there's no way to search the icon and that's why I struggle at times let me see if I don't easily find it I'll just use the normal button let me try something else I will go to this there's one more feature that exists in power apps and I should have used that I will use this icon and I think there's an icon property of this yes and I can just say icon dot search so I don't have to really look for it I can select any icon and just put the name and I'll get the search icon so now I have the search icon I have this button I can put the border uh, very simple border like border thickness and I think that should give me something again I'll leave it at that in this app I have done slightly more work to make it better looking still not the best looking but you will get the idea on how to do that okay so now what I have to do is implement some kind of uh, search so the way you will do that is implement the search formula there's an inbuilt formula in power apps called search and you will implement that on this gallery so in the gallery item right now it's connected to nutrition what we'll have to do we'll have to use a function called search that searches in a way I also feel that it applies some kind of search criteria on this item data nutrition table and then makes the result of that search as the item of this gallery so instead of just nutrition table completely it will take the output of that search so let's implement that search is an inbuilt function I selected search and power as will keep giving you hint first parameter is source which happens to be the table or table in this case is nutrition now text what text we want to search on let's say we want to search on so what is the text that we have to search upon for now let's keep it static before I put uh, I'll connect that to the text box for search and the last column is which column to search upon so this table has multiple columns which column we want to search upon I can say name although you can also search on multiple columns but for now I will just search on one column name and that's it so as you can see it's not making any difference because I'm saying search and second parameter is totally empty that means there's nothing to search so just return whatever is there whatever records are there in nutrition but let's say if I put some static value here let's say I say uh, butter milk 
uh, you can see that now it's filtered only for buttermilk. So this is how it will work. But we don't have to put the static value here. We have to somehow connect it to this text box. The name of this text box is text input. I'll just call it, I'll change the name of this to call it search input. So I have to connect to search input. So whatever user types here, we have to take that value and use that for searching within this gallery. So instead of static item like buttermilk, I will say search. And I'm purposefully missing something here and I'll show you what I mean. So I'll say search input dot text. So what that means is whatever is the text in this, uh, whatever is the text in this uh, in this text input box use the text of that and search in nutrition table using the text within this column so that's the idea so if the user types right now you will see that it's all empty why is that the reason is that right now the text in the search input is text input and there is no item in this table that meets the search criteria of name having text input. So simple way to fix that is to just say this. And now it's very similar to how we did initially where this search text is all empty. So empty means there's nothing to search there. But now as a user, I can type something. For example, I can type buttermilk and now it's searching for buttermilk. I can search for cake, and if there's any item with cake, it'll search for cake, and so on. So basic search is all done. Um, yeah, basic search is all done. I emptied it, and now I can see everything. Now, just for user experience, one small thing we can do here is to show user why we have this empty. Like in this app, it says, it gives some hint to the user, search food, but it is not really used in filtering the value. So there's a very simple property here for these inputs. It's called hint text and I can just say search food. And if I do that, it just gives the hint to the user. And so that was the last feature. Now we have fully functional app. Uh, from the summary, I can go to the detail, see the information, I can search using whatever information I want. And uh, probably I don't even need this button. Uh, and we are good here. Uh, that's, that's all about implementing this app. As you could see that we implemented a very powerful and useful app using static data in Excel. There's a lot more enhancements you can do here. For example, you can put a sort function here where it, it says that sort by calories, sort by quantity, uh, you can also show more details here. You can also do some kind of filtering. Let's say, show me only those food that have fat greater than this or fat less than this, calories less than this. You can get more fancy here. I'll leave that as homework for you guys, but this app is done. So let's review what we learned in building this app. So we learned that how to get the static data from Excel in Power Apps. We also did some basic formula like how to concatenate, which are very simple, which I have not listed here. We also learned how to create two screens app from, screen, uh, from scratch, summary and details. We also learned how to navigate across screens. So you implement a navigate and back. We also learned how to show and format summary fields in gallery control. And in the detail, how do you show more details? And we also implemented basic search feature in your app. So some final thoughts before I end this video. Uh, building an app with static is the easiest way to start learning many aspects of Power Apps. As you could see that even, even in the simple app with static data, using the data available publicly in a static format, you learn so many concepts of Power Apps. Uh, you can, it, and those apps don't have to be very toy apps. Sometimes they are realistic apps that you can create for your organization. Uh, they can not only be fun, they can also be very useful for people because everybody consuming the information in Excel format is not very easy. 
Uh, one last thing, remember to format your data as table. Otherwise, you'll find some problem, you'll hit some error when you try to import that as a static data. That's all about this video. Uh, if you need any help on Microsoft Power Platform, Azure Data Science, stay in touch. We keep uh, releasing regular videos, articles, and if you want to reach out to us, here is our email, hello at cloudatica.com, and our website is cloudatica.com. Thank you, have a great day.